In this video, we're going to talk about why cats have whiskers. Where do whiskers grow from? What are they made of? We'll get into all of that right meow. So what are whiskers? Whiskers are modified hairs, formerly known as vibrissae, that form specialized touch organs found at some stage in the life of all mammals except monotremes, which includes the duck-billed platypus and echidnas, and humans, of course. Though we still have vestiges of the muscles once associated with vibrissae in our upper lips. Where do whiskers grow? Whiskers typically grow around the nostrils and above the lips and eyes, but they are also found on the forelegs and feet of some mammals. Manatees have them all over their head and body, but in most mammals, they form in an ordered pattern. How do whiskers work? In essence, they function like an old-fashioned gramophone stylus. As whiskers brush an object, irregularities in the surface are translated into movements of the vibrissae. Those in turn are detected by hundreds of motion sensors inside a heavily innervated hair follicle. Rats and cats have 100 to 200 nerve cells per whisker. Seals have up to 1,500. These nerves relay detailed information about the direction, velocity, and duration of vibrosal movement, thereby allowing the animal to detect the precise location, size, texture, and other details of the object. How do animals use their whiskers to find food? Whiskers serve various purposes, but are most commonly used to locate food. Seals, for example, extend their whiskers forward to follow the hydrodynamic trails left by swimming fish. Whiskers are also important in indicating an animal's state of mind and play a role in various social behaviors. So how did whiskers evolve? The role whiskers played in the early evolution of mammals is perhaps the most fascinating aspect of the topic. The first mammals coexisted with dinosaurs and became adapted to the main ecological niches available, which includes hunting insects at night when predatory dinosaurs were least active and living high up in trees. Facial whiskers would have endowed these early animals with a sensory advantage, using the increased sensitivity of touch provided by vibrissae to help them move and hunt in the dark. All in all, whiskers are GPS and radar systems for cats. They are a powerful and important part of how a cat senses the world. Each thick whisker is filled with tiny super sensitive nerves that help your cat judge distance and space. It helps them make decisions like, is this box too small to get inside? How far do I need to jump to reach that counter? It's also how your cat detects what's around her. Cats that are blind can navigate rooms very well just by walking around and letting their whiskers get a sense of where they are spatially. The follicles, or sacs that hold the hairs, are deep, with lots of nerve endings that send messages to their brains. There's also a sensory organ at the tip of each whisker. It picks up vibrations in the environment that help the cat sense where she is and what other creatures are around her. Most whiskers are rooted in the thick pads on the upper lip, but smaller sets are in the eyebrow area, along the chin, and near the feet. The whiskers above the eyes help when the cat is hunting in grass or bushy areas. They trigger a protective eye blink if there's a branch or some other brush that might get into the cat's eyes. The whiskers also help during contact with other animals, including humans, and if touched, it causes their eye to blink. The whiskers on the sides of the nose are the same width as your cat's body. They help your cat figure out whether a space is wide enough to squeeze through. On the muzzle, there are four rows of whiskers on each side. The top two rows can move independently from the bottom two rows. Whiskers on the back of the legs help your cat climb trees. The carpal whiskers located on the underside of the cat's wrist are very useful in hunting. When the cat has prey captured in their paws, the carpal whiskers help determine if there's any movement. Since cats can't see as well up close, the carpal whiskers also help determine the position of the prey. Also, you can figure out your cat's mood. Watch your cat's whiskers because the complex set of muscles on the face moves the whiskers back and forth. The way a cat arranges them will tell another animal or other human how they're feeling. 
When a cat is relaxed, their whiskers will remain still, sticking straight out from the side of their head. If they're curious, or if they're on the hunt, they'll press them slightly forward. Cats that are nervous or upset will pin the whiskers back toward their face. Keep in mind, whiskers do not need trimming. Like other hairs on a cat's body, whiskers shed, and that's normal, but you should never trim them. A cat with cut whiskers will become disoriented and scared. If you cut them, it's the same thing as blindfolding someone, taking away one of the ways that they identify what's in their environment. The whiskers also make it pretty easy to tell when a cat is startled or excited, because every hair on its body will be standing on end, including the whiskers, which will point almost completely forward. Whiskers are a vital part of a cat's mobility and sense of security. Without whiskers, cats would not be able to achieve the great acrobatic beats that are so awe-inspiring and make them the amazing cats and pets that they are. Thank you so much for watching this video. In this episode, we're going to discuss the cat's stinky face, also known as the Flemin response or Flemin grimace. What is this strange, weird, open mouth expression that your cat does when it smells something exceptionally stinky and disgusting? You're about to find out right meow. Why do cats make the stinky face? As most cat owners can attest, cats do some really strange things. Now let's talk about Stinky face. Stinky face happens when a cat sniffs something and then proceeds to hold their mouth open, resulting in a sort of shocked expression, like something you would do when you smell something very, very stinky. And why do cats do this? Well, this face is actually called the Flemin response or Flemin grimace. It's a cat's way of analyzing an unfamiliar scent, most often in the form of pheromones. When a cat breathes in the scent through their mouths, the Fleming response allows that scent to travel through the roof of the mouth via two tiny ducts between their incisors to the vomeronasal organ. This is also called Jacobson's organ. The vomeronasal organ is a region of sensory cells within the olfactory system of mammals, and even amphibians and reptiles have it as well. Some scientists believe that the Flemin response is something between a sense of smell and taste, making it almost like a sixth sense. I'm looking at you, M. Night Shyamalan. Big cats such as lions and tigers also exhibit the Flemin response, as well as other animals such as dogs, horses, and even camels. Interestingly enough, the average house cat has over 30 different types of receptors in their Jacobson's organ, whereas dogs have only nine. So they are able to tell a lot more than just by simply sniffing something. So what exactly are they sniffing? What are they trying to analyze? Mainly, pheromones. The Fleming response is important for mating, marking territory, and intraspecific communication. Male cats tend to use the Fleming Grimace more often than female cats, and this is again due to their mating habits. Scents can help indicate compatibility and if the timing is right. Of course, as with most things involving cats, they don't only use this sniffing technique. Some cats use the Fleming response to interpret all kinds of different smells, like when you take your shoes off after a long day of work and your cat sticks their face in your shoe. Lots of cat owners can probably say this has happened to them before. Sometimes when you throw your stinky clothes on the floor, your cat will go right up to them, sniff it real hard, and then make stinky face. So the Flemin response gets its name from the German word Flemin, which means to curl the upper lip. In addition to curling back the upper lip, a cat may also curl their tongue and show their front teeth, while others simply look perplexed or actually quite disgusted with their eyes wide open. So you might be worrying about your pet's health the first time you see this open mouth breathing expression, especially if your cat is hovering over something and you can't see what their mouth is hanging over. 
rest assured, this stink face is a totally normal part of cat health and behavior, and it's usually not a cause for worry. However, if you think your cat is experiencing labored breathing, this could be a sign of respiratory distress, and you should contact your veterinarian immediately. Pet parents may also think that their cat's funny face or disgusted looking lip curl is an indication that they don't like what they're smelling. But in fact, it's just the opposite. Your cat is attracted to the smell, and they're going to make extra effort to get a really, really good whiff. The look on your cat's face is more of a function of how they have to move their mouths to get the air to flow to their Jacobson organ just the right amount so they can get the full, full inhalation of this interesting smell. Now if you want to get your cat to do the Fleming response, try this. Any cat, regardless of breed, age, or gender, is capable of exhibiting this response. While bringing home a fresh urine sample from another cat is not something you really want to do, at least I hope not, you could try that since this new scent might get your cat excited, just like catnip. To really get your cat's nose working and to add some fun enrichment to their day, you can also add some loose catnip to a refillable toy. That'll definitely make them happy. It's worth noting that some things are on the no-no list for cats to smell or eat, such as certain plants, foods, essential oils, and household items that can be toxic. So stick to a safe and interesting scent. And be sure to capture some nice pictures of stink face on your beautiful cat. Thank you. In this video, we're going to figure out why do cats like boxes so much. I think you'll be a little bit surprised at the answer, so stick around and we'll get right into it. If you are a cat owner or know someone who is, then you've heard about their obsession with boxes. To cats, no toy in the world, no matter how expensive or fancy it may be, compares to a simple cardboard box. It's a phenomenon that absolutely baffles all cat owners and anyone who interacts with cats. Why is it that when you purchase a brand new toy, a cat condo, a cat bed, and pull it out of the box, the first thing they want to do is go in the box. And even once you assemble or put in the perfect spot their new gift, they're asleep in the box. So why do cats like boxes? There are actually a lot of reasons. The main one is that they're confined, enclosed, and they feel safe in a small space. Cats are what we like to call ambush predators, and they find confined spaces, anywhere they can find them, a great place to hide. It helps them to hunt prey, feel safe, feel warm, and it ties into their instinctive behavior to snuggle up in a nice dark place where they can feel safe. So while boxes make cats feel safe, that sense of security is huge to animals. In general, when cats want to sneak up on future meals, they go to a nice dark place like a cave or a hollow log. And when they live indoors, the closest thing to that is a box. Have you ever tried to walk past the box and notice they swipe at you? Have you ever put something in the box and noticed they are immediately ready to pounce? And cats like boxes because they help to reduce stress. They offer a generic safe zone where your cat can observe and not be seen. Or so they think. And this is ideal for cats as their reaction to stressful situations is to run and hide. Have you ever heard of a scaredy cat? Cats don't have built-in conflict resolution strategies, so they'd much rather hide from their problems. The safety of the private enclosed space of a box is the best thing that they can ever find. A recent study at a university discovered another reason why cats love boxes. The study was performed on a group of shelter cats, and 50% were assigned boxes and 50% were not assigned boxes. The research discovered that the cats with the boxes actually recovered faster 
and adapted to their environment quicker than the group of cats that did not have boxes. This shows that boxes are incredibly beneficial for cats to help deal with change, to help deal with stress, to help deal with the unknown of life. Another reason cats love boxes is that they're a great insulator. Usually in the winter months, cats struggle to find places of warmth. If you leave out a box, most definitely that will be one of their favorite places to snuggle up and hide, especially if you put a blanket or a bed in there. According to a 2006 study by the National Research Council, the thermoneutral zone for a domestic cat is 86 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the range of temperatures in which cats are "quote unquote" comfortable and don't have to generate extra heat to keep warm or expend metabolic energy on cooling. That range also happens to be 20 degrees higher than humans, which explains why it's not unusual to see your cat sprawled out on the hot asphalt in the middle of a summer day, soaking in the sunlight. It also explains why many cats may enjoy curling up in tiny cardboard boxes and other small confined spaces. And that ties into another reason why cats love boxes. They sleep so much during the day. I'll put a link to a video right here explaining why cats sleep so much, but because they need their beauty rest, boxes are such a wonderful thing for them to use. Of the 18 hours a day that a cat spends sleeping, why not give them a nice comfortable little hiding spot with a big window that allows them to keep an eye on the world while they relax and snooze off into dreamland. It's just a simple cardboard box. A little leftover thingamajig from Amazon that you're going to break down and put in the blue recycle bin. But to your cats, they see a safe life of luxury, a cave that promises warmth, protection, and the opportunity to pounce at the next predator or piece of lunch. I recommend providing your cat with a box in your home at any given time just to give them a sense of safety, a space to hide, a place to escape when things happen that cause them stress. Another reason cats love boxes is they're just curious. There's a famous saying that curiosity killed the cat, which I don't like because I personally feel that it's this curiosity that makes cats so cute and fun to be around. So when you bring that box into the house, they want to investigate. Not only does it smell different, but they want to understand what is the purpose of this thing in their home. Even if you don't like boxes lying around, at least let your cat rub their face on it a little bit, at least for a few minutes before throwing it away. Another reason cats love boxes is the texture. Cardboard is the perfect texture for your cat to bite and scratch. That makes it an instantly fun game and toy to play with. Many owners find that cats love boxes purely to bite and chew on it, and soon enough they shred it to bits. To your cat, a plain old box makes a really interesting and fun chew toy that can keep them entertained for days on end. If you have multiple cats, think about having multiple boxes out of various sizes. Another phrase you've probably heard about is, "If I fits, I sits." It'll be nice and funny to watch them try and fit into a little box, like a shoe box, but you know they're going to try. Now, one of the reasons that your cat may be chewing on the cardboard box is because they may have a compulsive tendency to chew on inedible objects, a phenomenon known as pica. Pica is actually concerning when it comes to boxes because cardboard could be dangerous if consumed in significant amounts. While pica is relatively uncommon, eating cardboard boxes could be a warning sign that you should speak to your veterinarian about. Instead of allowing your cat to chew on the side or the flaps of the box, which by the way they may be using as a way of scent marking or leaving saliva as a pheromone, identify why your cat could be chewing on the cardboard box. I'll leave a link here to explain why cats actually rub their faces on everything, including your legs, including your bed, including everything in sight. In addition to your cardboard box, Also consider having objects for your cat to climb and scratch. Set up food puzzles. Leave out some cat grass. Give them some chew toys or perhaps some dental kibble in addition. Sometimes they like combining toys with their new fun cave of joy. In this video, 
we're going to talk about why are cats so easily scared? And why are they appropriately called scaredy cats? Well, we'll get into it. Right meow. We've all heard the phrase scaredy cat. But why are cats known for being so fearful? While fear is a common emotion in most animals, it may be that we're particularly aware of it in our cats because their super sensitive senses of hearing, sight, and smell help them react so quickly to being startled, and they flee at the first sign of a potential threat. Also, since cats are creatures of habit who easily become anxious when something takes them out of their usual territory or routine, it isn't hard for them to hide when they are actually terrified. Their ears pin back, their eyes get wide, their tail fluffs up, the hair on their back fluffs up, and they get down close with their nails sticking out. That said, cats typically hide signs of fear and anxiety extremely well, making it sometimes hard to pick up on. Let's go into what exactly cats are afraid of. Now some cats are naturally more fearful due to their genetic makeup, while others, especially larger, stronger breeds of cats such as Maine Coons and Bengals, may appear more confident. Socialization is the first two months of a kitten's life, and the more they play and interact with humans, the more that they're exposed to the usual sounds of life, the more comfortable they are with sudden surprises. While cats can be scared of all sorts of things, around the house and outside the house, some may be obvious, like the neighbor's dog, and some may not be obvious, like taking a plastic bag out of your pocket. So let's go into the first one, loud noises. Outside there's a storm and thunder's cracking, or it's the 4th of July and fireworks are filling the sky. Imagine how terrifying this must be to a cat with highly sensitive hearing. They don't know what a storm is. They don't know what the Independence Day is. In the home, cats are often scared of noisy household appliances, especially if they didn't become accustomed to them as kittens. Vacuum cleaners, printers, washing machines, lawn mowers, blenders, hair dryers, the list goes on and on and on. As with fireworks, if your cat has a pronounced noise phobia, it may help to acclimate them to the troubling sounds at a very low volume prior to the 4th of July and gradually build up their tolerance. This needs to be done very slowly and carefully, however, allowing your cat to leave the situation at any time. Cats are also scared of mirrors, but why? Some cats may ignore mirrors completely and others have a more complicated fight or flight reaction to seeing another cat suddenly appear right next to them. Like most animals, cats don't recognize themselves in a mirror. As a result, they may perceive their own reflection as an unknown cat, a stranger, which is made all the more baffling because they can't smell it. What is this creature? In these instances, your cat may lash out defensively at the mirror, raising its back to try and look bigger, hissing, swatting, or just running away. There's not much you can do to prevent a cat experiencing fear of mirrors, other than making sure that they can come and go freely as they wish from the room with the mirror. You can also distract them with a treat or give them a little toy to play with so that they can forget that there's this imaginary predator there trying to eat them. Given time, they're likely to get used to the fact that a strange and scentless cat sometimes appears in certain parts of the house. They may even try and get a good look behind the mirror, trying to figure out, is the cat behind here? Where is it? Are you hiding? I can't find you. Cats are also afraid of water. Cats as a species evolved in hot, dry climates where they would very rarely get wet. Getting drenched makes your cat feel heavy and cold it spoils their careful grooming and dampens their scent signals. No wonder many cats are afraid of water. Then again, some cats actually enjoy water. Turkish vans are known for swimming and jumping around in the water just like a dog. Some cats even love being under running water from the tap. 
something else, for example, love to drink water, rub their head in the water, and sit in water at home. It's generally easy enough for your cat to avoid water, but if you ever need to give them a bath, it's best to proceed with caution and follow expert advice or hire a groomer to do it instead. Cats can be afraid of new furniture. When cats rub on new furniture or roll on new carpet, they're doing their best to transfer their scent markers, claiming this as their own. This is now their territory. When you change a sofa or rug, you're replacing their familiar scent with a strange new smell. That's why some cats seem nervous or even afraid of your new furnishings. They will overcome this given time, but if you place a favorite cushion or blanket or toy near the piece of furniture, this can definitely help to ease with the transition. You might also consider using a pheromone diffuser or provide a reassuring scent, something like fell away. Cats are also afraid of leaving home. Since we all know that cats are highly territorial, it makes sense that when you remove them from their home into a completely different space, like the veterinarian's office, you're taking them away from their familiar surroundings and scent, something that will definitely make them feel unsettled. But please be patient. Provide them with their familiar toys or scents or blankets to help them feel more comfortable in these strange surroundings. Please consult your vet before taking your cat out of your house and see if it would maybe help to give them some anti-anxiety medication or a natural substitution. Cats are also afraid of other cats and dogs. To your cat who has never seen a dog, a dog looks and smells like a predator. So it's only natural that they act terrified. With careful introductions for the right cats and dogs, you can eventually get them familiar with each other. Meanwhile, you might love the idea of your cat making friends with another cat, but they don't necessarily accept them as some friendly humans do. Cats in general don't need company. They enjoy their solitude and they're very territorial creatures. As such, they tend to be hostile or fearful when they interact with another cat. If you're introducing a new cat to your existing clouder or group of cats, do so very slowly and very carefully. Make sure to introduce their scents to each other using a sock or a blanket or a piece of cloth. Rub this object on one cat and when the other cat's not around, rub it on the other and vice versa. This is the best way for them to get their scents accustomed to each other without risking a fight. Also allow them to gradually get glimpses of each other. Perhaps put one in a cat carrier for a short amount of time and let the other cat walk around and smell it. When you have them meet face to face, supervise. Make sure that they don't get in a fight or consult a cat behaviorist in order to help you with the integration. Cats are also afraid of other people. A new person visiting your house smells strange and your cat may perceive this person to be acting unpredictably so it's natural for them to be cautious and observe. Past experiences can play a part as well. For example, if your cat has been grabbed by a toddler, this may make them afraid of all children. Overcoming these negative associations takes time and patience. If your cat seems scared of a regular visitor or of your new friend or partner, ask the person to sit still and quietly on the floor while they offer your pets some favorite treats. Keep the interactions on your cat's terms. Do not force them and do not leave your cat alone with the stranger. This may definitely add to the stress that your cat is already feeling. Now I'd like to go into the truth about cucumbers and cats. A few years ago, viral internet videos showed unsuspecting cats freaking out when their owners placed a cucumber behind them while they ate, prompting millions to Google, why are cats scared of cucumbers? Some commentators speculated that the cucumber resembled a snake, triggering an innate fear response in the cats. A more likely explanation, however, is that the unsuspecting pets were simply startled by an unfamiliar object suddenly appearing close to them while they were off guard. Whatever the reason, the cats were clearly discomforted by the experience in the online videos. So be aware that your pet could be upset by the sudden appearance of an unexpected object in their field of view. And do not 
exploit your cat's fear for views on YouTube. Now, if you want to understand signs of fear in cats, note that they will sometimes cower, cringe, their body may tense, their ears may flatten, and their pupils may get large. More subtle signs of fear include licking their nose, blinking quickly, as opposed to the slow blinks when they feel safe, and or swallowing in the absence of food. A cat that is afraid might try to hide somewhere inaccessible get up to a safe high vantage point or run away. All of which are cats preferred ways of coping with stress and conflict. When this doesn't work, they may feel the need to show aggressive and confrontational behavior in an attempt to repel and create more distance between them and the thing they are afraid of. They might hiss, yowl, growl, swipe, arch their backs or raise their fur. A cat who constantly feels anxious or frightened may show signs of chronic stress, such as pacing, over-grooming, toileting outside their litter tray. This is very bad for a cat's welfare, so you must get them help. If you want to stop your cat from being scared, prevention is better than cure when it comes to scaredy cats. Kittens have a short socialization period between about two and seven weeks old. If they have repeated positive experience of something at this formative age, they are likely to readily accept it when they encounter it again in the future. If you're raising kittens, gently introduce them to noisy applications, keeping the appliances quiet at first. Different types of people, gentle handling, and other friendly, healthy, vaccinated pets. This will help them to be less fearful of these things when they grow up. For older cats, try to imagine the fear from your pet's perspective and devise solutions. A cozy box on a high shelf could allow your cat to keep a watchful eye on the vacuum cleaner or a visiting dog from a safe height. Cover the box in sound insulating blankets and it also becomes a welcome retreat from fireworks or thunder. A plug-in pheromone diffuser might help some cats feel calmer. It doesn't work on all cats, but it does assist those who are receptive to it in fear-inducing circumstances. You can also try desensitization techniques for common fears. Be sensitive to your cat's feelings, however, and always allow them the ability to remove themselves from scary situations. Do not force them to confront their fears as this will only make the anxiety worse. If you notice signs of fear in your cat regularly or any sudden change in behavior and you cannot pinpoint the source of their anxiety, please consult your veterinarian. In this episode, we're going to talk about why do cats follow you into the bathroom? After some scientific research, I think you'll find the results of their study very interesting. Stay tuned to learn more. Cats are fluffy enigmas intent on prying love right out of their owner's hearts. After they've fed them, of course, there is still so much more to what the cat's needs require. Though there are so many unsolved feline mysteries, one of the strangest is their obsession with the bathroom. Specifically, why do cats seem hell-bent on following their humans to the toilet? Well, we asked a cat scientist, as well as a wildlife biologist, and we asked them to help us understand this strange behavior. I want to peer into a cat's cunning little mind. And we're going to discuss the answers right now. If you're not a cat owner, it's hard to explain the situation, but here's how it goes down. You go to the bathroom, and all of a sudden your cat is pushing against the door, scratching against the door, trying their darn hardest to get in there with you. And you just got there. A moment ago they were lying on the bed, not even paying attention to you. But now that you're in the bathroom, the FOMO kicks in and they have to be there. Then, once you let them in, leaning forward, figuring out how to open the door if you've already started, the cat watches you pee. Now, let's say you kick the kitty out and say, you know what, don't watch me. They will scratch, they will stand up on their hind legs and try and pull the handle down and they will try their best to join you because they have to be in there with you. 
watching you. Use the restroom. Now the scientists we spoke to told us that they have two cats, and if they don't keep the door open while using the restroom, they will yowl, they will meow, they will cry outside the door until your heart is completely and utterly broken. She thinks that maybe they're trying to free her, as if she's stuck in there. So this cat flings itself against the door, slamming its body over and over, trying to figure out how to save their precious owner. But the scientists said that if they keep the door open, they come in, if there's a tub, they'll jump into the tub, they'll walk around, they'll explore, they'll smell things, play with things that they've never even seen before. A little tiny piece of toilet paper on the ground, you best be sure they're going to think it's a mouse and chase it around like cray cray. So there actually might be various reasons why cats like to join their people in the bathroom. Is it that their litter box is in there? So maybe they want to be in a room that smells familiar. Maybe they feel like, oh, I should use the restroom too. I was so busy relaxing and doing nothing, I forgot that I had to use the restroom. Cats also probably know that when their owners are in the bathroom, they are a captive audience. Nowadays, we're all so busy trying to figure out how to find that spare time to spend with our cats. They know that you are not distracted and you are not busy in this exact moment. Believe it or not, they may have been waiting for this moment to find your undivided attention. In general, cats also enjoy cool, smooth surfaces such as sinks and tiles. They also enjoy water sometimes. They want to be around where the water is. They want to hear the water. Maybe next time bring your camera with you and take some priceless photos of your cat relaxing in the bathroom while you use the restroom. Just don't include yourself. In the wild, cats are pretty solitary creatures. But domestic cats? Their obsession with bathrooms is really hard to explain when thinking about how they used to live in the outdoors. More than anything, your cat will probably want to sit on your lap. And this is opportunistic behavior characteristic to cats. Sometimes they want to find the warmest spot in the house and exploit the attention of everyone around them. Sometimes they want to be the center of the universe. And they've learned that humans don't do much when they're just sitting in this tiny little room with the strange little porcelain chair. Think of it this way. It's always good to have a close animal-human bond with your pet. Up until this point, you two have probably already formed a close relationship. And if your cat is new to your home, this is a great opportunity to make them feel welcome. Over time, as you spend many years together, you'll find that much of that time is in the bathroom. When you're relaxed, when you're thinking, hopefully not looking at your phone. And while it may not be comfortable, let them sit on your lap. Find a way to make it work. So if you haven't heard of it before, there's something called attention solicitation behavior. And in cats, this is usually accompanied by persistent purring, plus meowing, and other types of vocalization. Attention-seeking cats may also beg for food or be let outside. And this is usually reinforced when you give them that attention that they ask for, because they're reminding you of their needs. Perhaps in the future, be mindful not to reinforce attention-seeking behavior too much, because it can eventually become problem behavior in the future. Sometimes our cats experience separation issues. It has been determined that cats can suffer from separation-related problems, also known as SRP. This happens in dogs as well. Separation anxiety is evident through clinginess, destructive behavior, excessive vocalization, peeing on the bed, and pursuing their owner in all possible places. Environmental enrichment and behavior modification, along with cognitive training, plays a key role in developing an independent feline who doesn't feel the need to prowl their owner incessantly no matter where they go, including the bathroom. Although cats usually hide signs of sickness and illness, a feline displaying subtle behavioral changes, such as increased vocalization, urinating outside the box, and over-attachment to their humans, they may be experiencing pain or distress, and they might require a veterinary examination. Felines are highly territorial species. Your cat may perceive a threat to their personal security when important resources like litter trays are obstructed by the bathroom door being closed, leaving them feel unsafe and distressed. Pets who experience fear of storms will show increased anxiety as the thunderstorm approaches. Certain cats will seek shelter within bathrooms since they often have rock-solid walls built into the center of the house with small or absent windows offering insulation as well as perceived protection. As you now know, there are many possible reasons why your cat is following you into the bathroom. 
just know that it is utterly and completely normal. Every cat in the world, living indoors only, follows their owner into the bathroom. In this video, the loaf. So why do cats loaf exactly? Why do cats loaf? Does your cat look like a loaf of bread when they sit? The reason for that all tucked in pose may surprise you. Pretty much no one on earth would argue this point. Cats can be quirky. They pretend to knead biscuits on the couch. They chirp at birds outside the window and randomly spring out of a deep sleep to zoom down the hall at 2 a.m. Cat owners can spend years of their lives trying to decode their pet's body language and the mysteries of cat behavior. But one of their most entertaining quirks happens when they're doing nothing at all, the loaf. So why do cats loaf exactly? If you're not familiar with the term, cat loafing is when kitties tuck themselves into a rectangular shape with their paws beneath them and their tail wrapped around themselves. People call it loafing because they look like a loaf of bread or a meatloaf. But there can also be variations on the loaf theme. Some cats will keep their elbows out or their tail unfurled in a kind of partial loaf. It might depend on what they're laying on. Or, like a person shifts position when they're sitting, your cat may just move one foot out or, if there's too much pressure, pull out another part of the body. Cats seem to have a number of reasons for settling into loaf position. Most of them are good. Loafing just seems like a pretty comfy position for them. Sometimes it means that they're happy and comfortable, which is exactly what you want for your little fuzzy friend. They're literally kind of plopped over on their feet and just chilling. And they tend to do that when they're relatively relaxed and settling down into a nice snooze. If their loaf is accompanied by slow blinks, purrs, and other signs that your cat is happy, you can be sure that all is good. Sometimes they do it to stay warm. Even with a fur coat, your cat can get chilly. There's some speculation that loafing helps them conserve body heat. Like when you're walking out in the cold and you tuck your hands into the sleeves of your jacket. This is why you're more likely to find your cat loafing in the winter than in the summer. In general, you see that kind of tucked in body posture associated with cooler temperatures. In this loaf position, they're ready for anything. While your cat may sometimes close their eyes while loafing, rest assured they know exactly where you are in the room. You may even notice the cat tracking you with half closed eyes. When cats are truly asleep, they curl up on their side, so the loaf position isn't really a restful one. It's one where they watch their surroundings and they're ready to leap at a moment's notice. Cats are both hunters and prey, so being in a loaf position makes it easier for them to pounce quickly. Sometimes cats sit in a loaf when they're sick or in pain, and that's a loaf sign you probably don't want to hear about. Although the loaf position is generally a sign that your cat is comfortable, sometimes what looks like a loaf is really a cat trying to hide the fact that something is wrong. If you suspect that your cat is sick or injured, that's when the loaf signal means it's time to consult your veterinarian. Cats frequently do a hunched position when they're in pain. The loaf pose can relieve stress in your cat's lower back or help relieve abdominal pain. The partial loaf is actually a very famous variation. In this version, the cat will have his front paws visible. Some cats like to keep their elbows jutting out to the side. Others will sit with their paws extended forward like the famous Egyptian Sphinx. There's probably no particular reason for either, they just may be more comfortable one way. In this video, we'll talk about why cats purr. Cats are excellent pets, and many people enjoy the fact that they purr as much as their company and fun antics. Purring is not something that any other animal can do, and you will find that this is one of the key reasons that people enjoy the company of cats so much. 
If you know that you love the sound of your cats purring, but you don't know why they purr, you're not alone. Besides meowing, this is the most familiar noise that people associate with cats. Cats purr by dilating and constricting the glottis, which is near the vocal cords. This is done in a rhythm that creates the rumbly sounds that we all recognize. The laryngeal muscles of the larynx are involved, which is why you can feel the vibration of the purr when you are holding your cat and petting it as it purrs. Cat purring is a unique vocalization that happens to be very soothing to people as well as to cats. Even wild cats make this sound. So why do cats purr? Number one, they're happy. Happy cats purr. Even happy wild cats purr. This seems to be a social thing as well as an expression of contentment for cats of all kinds. Cats can purr for many reasons, but often happiness or excitement drives this behavior in domestic cats that are around humans daily. This is kind of like a cat smiling, and you should think of it like them thanking you for their comfortable home, their food, and love. Number two, they want something. Sometimes cats will purr as part of the behavior they use to ask for things like food or affection. Cats know that humans enjoy the sound of their purring, and they will use this noise to make requests of their humans as well. Purring can make people notice a cat and help motivate people to do what the cat wants. Family Connections Mothers and their kittens both purr when they are together. And wild cats will purr when they settle down to sleep in large groups at night. Purring appears also to be the means to express contentment and connection with other cats and human family members. While not every cat will purr when they are spending time with other cats, you will often see cats purring when they are cuddling in groups. Kittens often purr when they are nestled together with their mother and other siblings. Number four, when they are healing. Cats that have been injured and are starting to feel better or cats who are recovering from an illness might also purr when they start to feel better again. This can be a sign that a sick or injured cat has begun to feel better. You can use the purring of a cat as a barometer for how they are feeling after they have been under the weather as well. Some cats will also purr when they are scared or worried, which suggests that they might also use this behavior to self-soothe. Not every cat shows this behavior, but some cats will purr when they are clearly worried about something. This might mean that purring is linked with self-comfort in cats. Now, scientifically speaking, can the purring of cats help humans be healthy? Cat purring has been shown to offer soothing relief to those with chronic pain conditions, as well as those who struggle with mental illness. Anxiety reduction has also been linked with the purring of a happy cat. Many people will tell you that they can feel themselves relaxing as they hold a cat that is purring. This connection with health in humans and the purring of cats needs to be studied more, but many people believe that their cats help them to feel better daily. Besides offering soothing purring as a benefit for their health, the company of cats and their sweet little silly antics can help make the humans around them happier and healthier. Purring has also been associated with healing in other cats as well. They seem to purr when they are trying to heal other friends who are taxed with their health. Did you know that kittens are born blind and deaf, but their mother teaches them to purr when they are only a few days old? It is thought that this purring may be both an early bonding mechanism and a way for the kittens to communicate through their purring vibrations. However, not every cat purrs, but those that do each have a unique purring pattern. Some sound like they're whispering, others turn up the volume regardless of their size. Cats who purr very loudly are referred to as purr balls. Scientists believe all domestic cats vibrate in a low frequency range between 25 and 150 hertz. A cat's purring may also help to ease breathing, build muscle, repair soft tissue injuries, and reduce pain and swelling in their bodies. In this video, we'll discuss why do cats sleep so much? All in all, cats do sleep a lot. 
In fact, it's common for cats to sleep 18 hours or more every day. There are many reasons why your cat may be sleeping a lot, including boredom, anxiety, illnesses, and more. Consult a veterinarian if you notice a sudden change in your cat's sleeping habits. Now let's dig a little bit deeper into why cats sleep so darn much. And they can sleep absolutely anywhere. From your lap, to the sink, to the kitchen table, or on your keyboard while you're trying to work. There's nowhere a relaxed cat won't sleep. Many humans wish they had enough time to take a cat nap during the day. But unfortunately, we have too much stuff to do. Cats sleep a lot for many reasons, some of which are completely normal. First is boredom. Cats tend to spend much of their day sleeping. However, if your cat's only activity in the day seems to be napping, or you think your cat is resting too much, consider getting them more enrichment activities, such as treat dispensing toys or cat trees to climb. You can also let your cat relax in front of a window so they can watch the birds and bugs and cars go by. Pet parents can also prevent boredom by getting involved in their cat's play. It's a good idea to spend at least a few minutes every day, every few hours playing with your cat to ensure they're not bored and that they're getting enough mental stimulation and physical exercise to stay healthy. Boredom can lead to undesirable behavior, such as destroying furniture or wall scratching. It can also result in excessive meowing for attention and frequent napping. Napping too much during the day can keep your cat up at night. So instead, always ensure that your cat has enough activities in their day to prevent issues. Another possibility is illness. Cats tend to sleep more when they're not feeling well and they're experiencing pain. If your cat starts sleeping more than usual or for more extended periods of time, it may indicate an underlying health concern, such as kidney disease, feline diabetes, or heart disease. Cats can't talk to us, so they can't tell us when they're not feeling well. They also tend to hide their symptoms, especially when they're in pain. Many signs of illness in cats are subtle, such as napping more often or for longer periods of time. Changes in your cat's sleeping habits can indicate health problems. So if they're napping more than usual, it can be a sign that they're not feeling well. Some illnesses that may cause cats to sleep more often include kidney disease, deafness, hypothyroidism, feline immunodeficiency virus, and feline dementia. Perhaps any mild or severe illness can result in more sleeping since sleeping allows your cat's body to rest to fight off disease and infection. Another reason cats sleep a lot is for energy conservation. Animals in the wild conserve their energy to hunt and catch prey. While most hunting requires stealth, wild animals must also engage in sprinting and running suddenly to catch their meals. Even though cats are domesticated, they still have many natural instincts, including hunting. So if your cat is frequently napping, they may be trying to conserve their energy for when they need it the most. Another reason that cats sleep a lot is stress. Like humans, cats may nap during times of increased stress. Anxiety in cats is common, especially for those adopted from shelters. Your cat could be stressed for several reasons, including guests in the home, storms, or even separation anxiety. Your cats do miss you when you leave your house. Your furry friend may find a quiet place to sleep during times of stress as a way to cope with their fears. Sometimes having other cats in the household who are sick or who have just returned from a long vet visit can cause stress since they can smell that something is a little bit different. They can even smell illnesses in other cats. These are all causes for stress. Another reason your cat may be sleeping a lot is that they're up during the night. Cats that are up at night will sleep more during the day because they don't get the sleep they need at night. Cats are typically most active in the early morning and dusk, making them crepuscular. While most pet cats can change their sleeping schedules to match yours, many may still be accustomed to being more active at specific parts of the day. Additionally, napping during the day may be why your cat is up at night. When your cat sleeps during the day, they have more energy at night. This cycle will continue unless you can find a way to keep your cat awake and engaged throughout the day. 
If you don't want your cat running around in the house in the middle of the night, look for ways to enrich them during the day. Another reason your cat may be sleeping a lot is age. The older animals get, the more energy they need to conserve. Older cats are less active than younger cats and typically sleep more. Additionally, because older cats don't usually climb or jump as well as they once did, they may not be able to get to their favorite spots or have enough energy to play throughout the day. As a result, they may sleep more. You may believe that your cat is napping when they actually are not. Many cats can relax with their eyes closed in their favorite spot and look asleep, but they're actually awake. Kittens tend to sleep more than adult cats because they're still growing. In this episode, we'll talk about why do cats rub their face on everything? Most cat parents have experienced their cats rubbing its face on things. In fact, humans love when cats come over and rub their heads against them. It feels like a way for your cat to show that they love you. But is that really the reason why a cat rubs their face against you? When you see a cat rubbing its face on you, other cats, walls, furniture, this behavior is called bunting and there are several purposes for this act. When a cat rubs its head on things, it creates scent communication. Cats have scent glands in certain areas of the body, and their head region has several by their chin, mouth, ears, neck, and cheeks. Scent glands can also be found on a cat's paws and along its tail. When a cat rubs a scent gland against something or someone, they are leaving their pheromones or scent behind to mark that person or thing. It's a way that cats claim their territory and communicate this information to other cats in the area. Even if you have a single cat household, cats will still do this as part of their instinctual behavior. Cats also rub their face on things because it's considered a mating behavior. Bunting is a behavior female cats use with male cats when they're in heat. If you have an unfixed female who is rubbing her face on other scent gland areas, on you or on objects much more than usual, it's related to her being in estrus. Your cat should return to normal when she's done. On the other hand, in general, male cats tend to bunt objects like walls and furniture way more than female cats. This is also related to mating as establishing territory and making sure other males don't interfere if a female happens to come into heat. This is important to a male cat, even if they've been fixed. Cats rub their heads on things to express friendly greetings. In a multiple cat household or cat colony, bunting is a way that cats will greet each other. By rubbing their scent against each other in a cat colony, they are releasing their scent on them. Likewise, they're getting the scent of the other cats on them and this facilitates social affiliation between cats. It creates a group scent that all the cats in the home or colony recognize. If you've ever taken a cat to the groomers or to the vet and they've returned home to find your other cats unhappy with his or her presence, it's because they lost that group scent from being bathed or from a medical procedure. What you can do is brush your other cats and then use that brush to brush the returning cat so that the scent will be dispersed on his or her fur. Another thing you can do is take a sock, put it over your hand, and rub your cat that's just come back from a visit to the vet and rub it on the other cats. This is another great way to transfer that scent. Bunting gathers data. Bunting also helps cats to get more information about a new person or cat as rubbing against you allows them to pick up your scent. In these cases, the cat is more likely to rub against a stranger's leg instead of rubbing their face on your face. This form of closeness is reserved for beloved owners with an existing relationship to the cat. Bunting is also considered a form of timestamp for cats when it's used on objects, walls, or furniture. Another cat can tell by the scent left behind when a cat was there, and this tells them whether they should be on alert for a run-in with another cat. You can take this as a form of high praise if your cat rubs his head and face on you. This behavior is often accompanied by purring or chirping, which is an additional way to tell that your cat is very happy to be with you. 
You may also see your cat do this behavior with other cats or even other pets like dogs, which is a sign of a harmonious pet household. Cats use bunting to calm themselves when they feel anxious or stressed. By dispersing their scent on objects around them, they are filling the area with their scent, which can make them feel more secure. You may especially see this behavior if you move to a new home or adopt a new cat or kitten, because the new environment is completely alien to that cat. They will spend a lot of time exploring and rubbing their head and face on furniture, walls, and people to not only establish territory, but to also make the surroundings feel more familiar and safe. In this video, we're going to talk about why do cats love catnip so much? Are there benefits to consuming catnip? Is my cat okay when it acts wild on catnip? We'll explain all of this right now. So what is catnip? Cat's wart, cat mint, Nepeta cataria, or just plain old catnip? is a species in the genus Nepeta, in the family Lamaisae. Catnip is a perennial herbaceous plant, quite similar to mint, that grows between the late spring to early autumn and is native to Europe and Asia. Many believe that this plant was given its name due to the fact that cats are so attracted to it. Even its Latin name contains the word cataria, which means of a cat. In its natural form, catnip is vivid green in color with a square stem. Large, triangularly shaped, jagged leaves is sometimes flowered and can grow up to three feet tall. When undried, it has a lemon and mint smell. So why is your cat so obsessed with it? Well, catnip contains an essential oil that acts as a feline pheromone stimulant and relaxant. The effects of this stimulant on your cat is quite similar to how humans react to cannabis. Nepotalactone's allure doesn't stop at house cats. In fact, certain big cats like leopards, tigers, and lions are also fans of this weedy plant. On the off chance that your cat isn't a huge fan of catnip, fear not. There is a perfectly normal explanation for this. Preference for the plant hinges on two factors, genes and age. This is actually similar to how genes dictate how humans perceive cilantro. Typically, people either love it or think it tastes like soap. About one third of cats don't have the catnip gene. Kittens under six months old and elderly cats often won't react to nepotalactone. Well, how do most cats physically react to it? If cats smell cat mint without ingesting it, the nepotalactone triggers happy endorphins in your cat's brain. They will often roll onto their backs, flip, rub their faces, chew, sniff, drool, stretch, lick, and jump. In most cases, they can often become aggressive and or hyperactive. When cats ingest catnip, they tend to mellow out. These highs can last between five to 10 minutes. Is it healthy for your cat? Absolutely. Your cat is a great judge of when they've had enough and will often just walk away after they've had their fun. Other benefits of catnip to cats is that when ingested, catnip acts as a sedative, reducing anxiety, stress, and depression. Catnip can reduce stomach pain and bloat. It is also a great way to get your cat into a bath if they have irritated or inflamed skin. You can dissolve a teaspoon of dried catnip in hot water and add it to a lukewarm bath, which should send your kitty right to the water. It's no secret that cats are picky about their toys and are prone to boredom. This often can end in torn furniture, bedding, curtains, and many other things. In this way, catnip can also be used as a powerful training aid. Sprinkle dried catnip on the toys and scratching posts to distract them from your living room set. Is there such a thing as catnip for dogs? Dognip is actually a thing. Well, and it sort of isn't. So catnip is perfectly safe for dogs, and there's no difference between catnip for cats and catnip for dogs. In our canine pals, it tends to act more as a sedative. It can be useful for anxious little dogs who need help falling asleep. What are the various ways to use catnip? Catnip comes in many forms, but they all come kitty approved. Catnip toys are a great way to get your cat excited on a boring day or to distract them while you're on a call on Zoom during work hours. 
Dried catnip works great when you sprinkle it on cat trees, toys, or scratching posts. Catnip sprays can be used on kitties' toys, bedding, or in places you want to encourage them to play. Fresh catnip and people who grow their own catnip plant at home are a great way to keep yourself in constant supply so that your cats are always happy. Alternatives to catnip are silver vine, tetarian honeysuckle, or valerian root. A chemical analysis of these three substances in addition to catnip shows that the concentration of the chemical compounds which cats are probably responding to respond very similar to all four. All four of these substances cause euphoria in at least some cats, with most cats responding mostly to silver vine. There is an olfactory enrichment that occurs when a cat plays or smells with any of these substances. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons. This will definitely help to let me know that you'd like to see more. Up next, check out this video. I think you'll like it.